But Bless the name of the Lord, everybody. Bless the name of the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and speak in tongues and get your spirit ready for the message of the day. And of course, if you can't speak in tongues, wherever you are, just pray and keep calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you can speak in tongues, go ahead and speak in tongues just to get your spirit ready. Speak in tongues wherever you are. Mark It is in Jesus' name we pray. Well, if you are perhaps connecting for the first time and you are wondering how can these people choose to speak in tongues because I've seen it now in the body of Christ, especially with babies in the Lord, they find it difficult to understand that a Christian can just speak in tongues at any time because they have been taught this thing. I don't know who taught it and where does it come from because it's not biblical that for you to speak in tongues, something must come on you and then you speak in tongues. No, the Holy Spirit is not somebody who lives outside us. The Holy Spirit is somebody that lives in us. And the Holy Spirit is the one that trains the spirit of a man because this is a language of the spirit. We call it kingdom language. And the Holy Spirit knows the language better than anybody. That's why in Acts 19, when Paul asked them if they had received the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they said to him, we have never heard of that baptism, but we received the one of John. And the one of John was of water. And then Paul said, indeed, Paul, uh, John baptized with water for the repentance of your sins. But Jesus now came to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says he laid his hand on them. And the Spirit of God came upon them. And they began to prophesy and spoke in other tongues. Hallelujah. Scripture says in Mark 16, those who believe in me, not only will they cast out devils, but they shall speak in unknown tongues. Hallelujah. The Bible says he who speaks in tongues improves himself. The Bible then says, building ourselves up. So it's not something that you uh, building ourselves up by praying in the spirit, of course. Uh, the Bible speaks about the arm of God praying with all kinds of what? Prayers. Praying in the spirit. So the Bible there is talking about tongues. So we can go on and go on and go on, but it is me trying to help a baby in the Lord who has been told that for you to speak in tongues, you must wait and no, it doesn't work like that. We are not in the Old Testament. We are not in the Old Covenant. We are in the New Covenant. According to the book of Hebrews, we are in the New Covenant. In the Old Covenant, Moses said, if your presence is not with us, we are not going anywhere. But we are not in the days of Moses. We don't wait for God's presence to come. We are carriers of God's presence. That's why we love the song that says, I am the presence of God. Everywhere I enter, Jesus Christ is seen. So my mind is his mind. My thoughts are his thoughts. My hands are his hands. That's why Jesus said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yes. Hallelujah. And First John chapter 4, 17 says, as he is, so are we. I thought I was talking to Christian here. Christians, I don't know if this is the right Zoom. Are we in New Life Church or another church? <laughs> Especially on Zoom, I don't know. Maybe New... A lot of new people, right? Oh, okay, it makes sense. Brothers and sisters, I'm so excited to come into your world with the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be long, but I know that God will touch you in a mighty way. 
I want you wherever you are to quickly lift up your Bible. We are not going to finish our confession, but we are going to definitely uh, do our confession. Praise the Lord. Lift up your Bible up high and say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I believe, I believe. It, contains the word of God. it contains the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. Ready to receive the incorruptible word of God. And my life shall never, ever be the same again. Say glory. Because of time, I'm not going to be long. But I want you to hear me. And hear me in the Holy Ghost. So let me start by saying, today's message for the very first time is not for everybody. That does not mean you cannot learn from it. But today's message is for the chosen ones. All right. Hands, hands if you look at the topic, rather the title says, what every chosen person must know. Say with me, what every chosen person must know. I believe is, is frustrating not to know who you are. And the reason I'm using the word I believe is because I've dealt with people who are frustrated, not because they are meant to be frustrated, they are frustrated because they just don't know who they are. Let me say again, maybe I'm talking to myself here, but I'll talk to myself anyway. It is very frustrating for you to know there's something special about you, but not know what it is. Because as long as you do not know, nothing will happen. That's why the Bible then says, it is by knowledge that the just are delivered. It is by knowledge that the righteous are delivered. So not every deliverance or help that one needs has to be dramatic. It can be a message like this. And the very same message launches you into who you are. It's one thing when you know who you are. It's another thing when you don't know who you are. It's one thing when you know who you are. But it's another thing when you know how to function according to your calling. That's why in the Bible, hear me very well, because we're talking about the chosen ones here. In the Bible, you realize that we have prophets who are called into different functionalities. But they are all under one umbrella called prophet. We have different people who are chosen, but not all chosen people are called to do the same thing. You can be chosen, but as long as you do not know what you are chosen for, you will never manifest. You can be a prophet, and as long as you do not know what type and what kind of a prophet you are, you will not be in the prophetic yet you are a prophet. Does that make sense to you? Let me break it down so you guys understand. Just because one is a prophet, right, it does not mean that they already know what kind of prophetic grace they carry. That's why God was so specific with his prophets in the Old Testament. I'll give an example. Jeremiah, you are a prophet to nations. 
So he knows he's in the prophetic, but his gift is to address nations. He then appears to Ezekiel and says, you are a prophet, but to the house of Israel. What then happens if Jeremiah starts talking to villages? He will stop hearing God. I don't know if you guys are getting it. And that is because that which is in him is connected to nations. So most people are chosen, anointed, but most people, like I'm saying, don't know what exactly they're anointed for. So today we are talking about what every chosen person must know. We are not going to answer all your questions. We have schools for that. But we are going to help you navigate, help you locate who you are. Because you only grow within the confinements of your calling. Let me explain that. You only grow within the confinements of your calling. Meaning you can't grow in what you are not called to be. A lot of people try to grow in an area they were never called by God to function in. Hallelujah. God is not a confused God. God is not the author of confusion. It breaks my heart because today in the church, nobody talks about this. People talk about giving. People talk about prayer. Nothing wrong with that. People talk about so many things. But not everybody talks about these things. And these things, they matter. One of the reasons why in the Old Testament we had a school of prophets, we had a band of prophets, we had so many things, different things, it was because the prophets and the people understood that being a prophet is a first step to it. But there's so much one has to learn. Are you with me? Turn with me into the book of Matthew. I think I'll finish first because Zoom, you are, I don't know if you're here or not. Uh, some people are saying we are here. You don't look like you're here. Uh, I think we should just cancel Zoom and remain with, uh, with, with YouTube. Because the people on, uh, on Zoom are the people that I can see, but they are clearly not here. The book of Matthew, read for me. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, please. Matthew chapter 22, verse 14. Yeah. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now, thank you. We, we don't have to repeat that one. Everybody knows that one. Please be seated. So, this is Jesus talking. And I want to focus on that particular verse, scripture that we have just read. I don't want to deal with the whole context because it takes another 10 completely. But I want to talk about what Jesus said there. When he said, many are called, but few are chosen. You know, here Jesus is giving us a ratio. He says, many are called. Meaning if you are going to look for the cold, you are not going to struggle to locate them because they are a lot. But few are chosen. What that means is we don't have a lot of people who are chosen. Being chosen by God is not something that you do or desire. And because of desire, because of zeal, because of hunger, you wake up and you are chosen. I'm not saying you cannot wake up cold. Two different things. But to be chosen is a different thing from being called. Maybe let's break it down. Now, to be chosen by God means to be set apart before time. Yes. 
Because remember, to you, time begins the day you were born. I'll give another example so you understand. He says to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, Jeremiah, I knew you. And I ordained you a prophet. Wait a minute. Where was Jeremiah ordained? Jeremiah was ordained in the spirit. So he comes down to the realm of men, ordained already. It is just a matter of time for that anointing to manifest. Nobody will pray for him for it to come down because it's already in him. Nobody will release it. It's already in him. Remember Paul said, stay up the gift that I put in you by the laying of my hands. Another vision, stay up the gift of God that I have put in you by the reason of my prayers and laying of my hands. Now, the gift was not there. Paul put it there by laying his hand on the young man, Timothy. But as for this one called Jeremiah, you can lay your hand, lay your hands, lay your feet. He does not need it. He's born with it. So Jeremiah is chosen. He did not attend a fire conference to have it. If he attended a fire conference, he attended a fire conference for energy. For energy. Hallelujah. For a stirring up. Hallelujah. For more knowledge. Not for him to acquire the gift. He already had it. Whether you like Jeremiah, whether you don't like Jeremiah, it's too late. He is chosen. That's what being chosen means. To be chosen means to be set apart before you were born. So you did not choose yourself. He chose you. But to be called now means, right, you were not chosen, but you were called to it. As simple as that. The reason why I call you is because you are not with me. Why will I call you if you are with me? I talk to people who are with me. But I only call those who are not in my vicinity. So I call you because you are not in my space. You are not where I am. So many are called, but few are chosen. Are you with me? There is a huge difference between those that are called and those. I don't want to talk about that, but I'm just passing by. That's why you hear Amos 7 verse 14 says, I was not a prophet. Neither trained as a prophet. Ay, yeah, yeah. He says, I was not even a son of a prophet. Right? But he says, I was a gatherer of sycamore fruit. And the Lord called me to be his prophet. He says, I was not even trained. Meaning you can be trained. Ah, people, are, people, th people think I'm making this up. Go to Amos. Uh, let's see NLT. People think I'm making this up. It is only people who are still napios. Who be like, why, why do you have to be trained? Why do you have to be trained? Why do you have to be trained if God puts it in you? The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why will you study then if God has called you? Why will God say you die because you lack knowledge? If he called you, can't he give you the knowledge? And the Bible says, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you as my priests. They are priests, but because they lack knowledge, God says, I'm going to reject you. What is a priest? God's representative. Meaning God never wants to be represented by somebody who does not have knowledge. That's why understanding is not something that is given. It's something that you get. Oh, you didn't hear me. Wisdom is a principal thing. But in all thy getting, get understanding. You are not given understanding. You get it. Um, 
Read NLT for me quickly, please. Amos 7, verse 14, please. Amos chapter 7, verse 14 in NLT. That's correct. But Amos replied, I'm not a professional prophet. Eh, so they are professional prophets. What is he saying? Uh huh. And I was never trained to be one. I was never trained to be one. And the reason being is this guy understood the prophetic. Oh my God. Have you seen somebody who's not a prophet? Who's not in the prophetic? Who can prophesy? Who can hear God with all humility? Right? Who does not even move in any of the gifts of the spirit? Standing and fighting everything about the prophetic. I've seen people saying, uh, how can one go to a Bible college to preach? How can one go to a school of a prophet? To, to, the school of a prophet does not make people prophets. Equips you. Are you hearing me? Yes. Exactly. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That's why in the Bible you had Elijah having a, a school of prophets. And in those days, hear me because I'm talking to the chosen people and I'm helping somebody. I'm helping somebody. In those days, for you to join the school of the prophets, you had to be a son of a prophet. That's why in the days of Elijah, there were so many prophets that Elijah himself did not know about. When he said, I'm the only prophet left, God said, don't worry. I've got thousands of prophets that you don't know about. Are you hearing me? So in those days, God had raised so many prophets. That's why we talk about mysterious prophets in the types of prophets. Prophets that are not known, but they are called by God, chosen by God. Does that make sense to you guys? So, Watch this now. So then you had to be a son of a prophet. That's why Elisha, who carried the spirit of Elijah at the end, was never in the school of the prophets. And that is because he was a farmer and his father was a farmer. So back then, it mattered who your father was. That's why when Saul began to prophesy after he met a band of prophets in the days of Samuel, another version say a company of prophets, Another one, it was a group of prophets. Another one will say a school of prophets. Can you believe it? In First Samuel, can you believe that? The Bible says, and Saul prophesied, and people wondered, is this not so? The son of Kishi. They are not moved by what he's doing. They want to know, but he is the son of Kish, and Kishi is not a prophet. That's why Jesus was not accepted in Nazareth. They said, is, not, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, the carpenter? So they are expecting him to be dealing and busy with wood. So they are shocked because his father is a carpenter. But if Jesus, that's why John, they were not shocked. They only wanted to know, who are you? They never asked John, by whose authority are you doing this? John, they feared him because they knew his father. And his father was a priest. I don't, I don't know if they are getting. No, 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 no. I thought I was here to talk about what it means and what every chosen person must know. Yes. Hallelujah. So during this uh, teaching, we don't ask questions as yet. So I see there's somebody asking a question. It's a teaching. We'll answer you. Just be patient. Write if you're writing down. Trust me, before you know it, that question that you have will be answered by the Holy Spirit. So just, you know, write so that you don't miss anything. That's why people don't learn. It's difficult because when you hear something, you want to ask a question. So wait until the end. Don't arrive before you depart, okay? Now, we move. Are you with me? Amen. So we then see that not everyone who is in the prophetic, they are born prophets. They are those who are called to it. Just like Amos says it. He was called to be one. So there are those who are born chosen and there are those who are called. And they function as the chosen. But they were not chosen before the foundation of the world. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. Are you hearing me? I believe the Bible says something. Oh Lord. 
Can we, can we go deeper just a little bit, please? I believe the Bible says something in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. It says, for you are a holy people. Are you hearing this? To the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the people who are on the face of the earth. So the Israelites were chosen not after they were born. I don't know if you guys are getting it. They were chosen while is they were in Abraham. So they are born and they come out. God says, you know what? Whatever I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it because I have a deal with you. It crosses and it moves beyond the veil of the flesh. I have chosen you. You did not choose me. I don't know if that makes sense to somebody. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible then says in the book of, um, I believe it's Ephesians. Hallelujah. I don't know if, I feel I'm on my own. I'm not seeing people on Zoom. And it's troubling me. I'm wondering what, what happened to the people. Why is this now? Oh, okay, so uh, people are there on Zoom. Okay, listen to this. Um, Ephesians 1 verse 4 says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So to be chosen has nothing to do with after you are born. So it happens, hear me, chosen people, before you are born. Now let's go deeper since you understand that there is a difference between the called and the chosen. Right. Being called means to be pulled, to be drawn towards. That's why you say, what is my calling? I'm called, but I want to know my calling. What am I called towards? What am I drawn towards? What, where does the pulling lead, if I was to put it that way? Are you with me? So, we go deeper now. What does it really mean to be chosen? Now let's break that down. Now we know the foundation of the, before the foundation of the world, blah, blah, blah. But what does it really mean? The word chosen appears so many times in the Bible. More than 28 times, right? But of course, it means different things to different people in different seasons. And also in different situations. So a situation can define what a chosen, what to be chosen mean. Right? That if you're going to define being chosen because of a situation or what happened while you're in a situation, you can miss the real meaning of what being chosen means. I don't know if you guys are, are getting it. Hallelujah. Because somebody can be in a situation and Let's say they're in an accident and people die and the person comes out alive and they come and say, I'm chosen. Yet you are not chosen, you are just sitting in a better position. So you can't define that because of a situation. I don't know if you guys are getting what I'm saying. Not everybody that survived, survived because they're chosen. Not everybody who came out of a situation because they were chosen. Are we together? Yeah. Exactly. But I want you to understand what it means to be really chosen because I'm talking to people who are chosen here and some of you have gone through so much not understanding why, but today you'll understand by the Spirit of God. Yeah. What helped me in my walk with God is realizing that there was more into my life than just going to church every Sunday. I don't know if you guys are getting it. And to be honest with you, I never thought I would be preaching in front of people. Well, that was too far from me. I never even thought that I would be a leader of a great church like this. You know, with millions of people following from all over the world. But I always knew that there is more into this than just going to church every Sunday. And I always had this thing in my mind that on Sunday I'm a priest. But Monday to Saturday, I'm a king. <laughs> I always had that. Praise the Lord, everybody. And, and that is because the Bible says we are kings and priests. So I always had that. So I knew that, you know what? My walk with God, if you were to go back years ago, you'd be surprised. Because I refused to sleep in the bed of discouragement and ignorance. 
So what does it mean to be chosen? Like really, what does it really mean? In the book of Psalm 118, and you read verses, uh, let's go to 134. 134, and we read verses, uh, we'll go back to the one of 118 later. Um, 134, check verse 14 for me first. Let's hear what it says. 139, sorry. Psalm 139, verse 14. We should be there by now. Amen. Psalm 139, verse 14. Yeah. I will praise thee, yeah. for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay, who's talking? David. David says, I will praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully. Somebody say fearfully. Fearfully. And wonderfully made. Now, watch this. Please be seated. David understood something that not everybody understood. And that was, he is chosen. Because listen to what he says. He says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wait a minute, brother David. With all due respect. We know the Bible. We know the scriptures. God never said in Genesis 1 verses 26, let us fearfully and wonderfully make men. God said, let us make men in our own image. Where do you get fearfully and wonderfully? Oh, the Zoom people. I think we should just, I think we should just end Zoom once and for all. They are too comfortable. Maybe uh, YouTube. YouTube, if you are here, put fire emojis. Zoom, if you are here, I want to see you wave your hands. Let's see who's here. YouTube, let's see fire emojis. And my team is advising, if you are watching on YouTube, like the video. They are saying that if you like the video, a lot of people get to see it. So you can like if you have not shared. I want to see fire emojis. I'm seeing hands, uh, Daniel, uh, that's Monica. Hey, Clementine, I've not seen you in a long time, but it's good to see you. Uh, Loveness, no, no CPO. I'm seeing uh, Pastor Rana, Maria, um, who else, Victoria. Kesana uh, City, Kesana City, Kesana City, good to see you. Uh, YouTube is on fire. I'm telling you, you will never go wrong with YouTube. If you want to meet spiritual people, go to YouTube. <laughs> if you want to meet people with an understanding, go to Zoom. <laughs> but spiritual people are on YouTube. Hallelujah. No religion there. I hate religion with passion because, okay, one would like, what do you mean? <laughs> Let me quickly pass by here. If there is number one enemy, number one, not number three, number five, towards your spirituality is religion. Nothing blocks your spirit man. Nothing hinders your spirit man from exercising the dominion that he has according to Genesis 1 verse 27. Than re religion. I don't know if they got it. Religion, we are talking about men's tradition. Men's ways to please God. Men's ways to get approval from God. God is not a religious being. God is a spirit. <laughs> Meaning I am in my rights whenever I tap in the spirit because my creator is a spirit. I'm more me when I'm in the spirit. I don't know if they are getting it. No, they are not. Ah, they are missing it already. <laughs> Remember, oh, listen, I'll end up saying a lot of things here, but it's okay. Anyway, it's our, it's our, it's our service. Remember, Genesis 1.27, and God created men in his own image, right? In his own likeness, created he them, right? 
But why was he creating them? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Let us create men in our own image so that they may have what? Dominion. So the reason of their creation is there. You know, if we talk about uh, 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 the mission statement, it's there. Amen. Why were they created? To have dominion is there. Oh, yes. Then in verse 27, he did that. He created them. Right? Amen. In his own image. So for me to understand men in Genesis chapter what? 127, I need to understand God. Because man is created in the image of God. So, but who is God? John 4. God is a spirit. So, if God is a spirit, it means Genesis chapter 1, man, verse 27, man is a what? A spirit. But we see God again forming man out of the dust of the ground. Genesis 2, verse 7. But he does not talk to, our, to, to he doesn't talk about that man. We don't see dominion attached to that man. We don't see authority attached to that man. We don't even see power. We just see a God formed out of the dust. So the real man that has dominion is Genesis chapter 1 man. And that is the spirit man. And that is who you are. So Genesis chapter 2 man, the flesh, is to house Genesis chapter 1 man. Is to shelter Genesis chapter 1 man. So the enemy keeps you busy in the flesh. So that Genesis chapter 1 man does not manifest. So religion is to nature the Genesis chapter 2, 7 men. Yet spirituality focuses on Genesis chapter 1 men. So you walk in dominion not because of this. That's why Paul advised us to walk in the spirit all the time. I don't know if they are getting what I'm trying to say. So YouTube is very spiritual. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, let's talk about this. So we're talking about Genesis chapter 1. And we're talking about verses 26 as well. That it says, let us create men in our own image. Not let us create men and fearfully and wonderfully make him. No, it's not in the Bible. But listen to what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, as for me, I know you all have been created in the image of God. But as for me. I was fearful and wonderfully made. Then I had to study the word fearfully. What is he talking about? What is he saying? What is making him to be fearfully and wonderfully made? Why when it comes to him, something had to change? And as I studied the scriptures, I then realized the word fearfully means, it's a, it's a, it's a Hebrew word means, meaning yare, Right? Yare, meaning to be treated with honor or with reverence. But then again, yare means to be set apart. Yare means to be mugged. Oh, my God. Yare then means to be separated. So what he was saying was, as for me, I am separated. <laughs> I am set apart. So it was not just God creating. He created me and set me apart. That's what he was saying. I feel it. I feel it. Hallelujah. So David understood who he was. But for him to understand who he was, he had to go through certain things. He did not wake up in the morning and understood who he was. He was chosen before he was born. That's why when God spoke to Samuel, he said, I don't look at the flesh. I don't look at the physical appearance. I look at the heart. What is the heart? The inside of a man. The spirit of a man. Are you with me? So God now was not, was, was not choosing David that day. It was his anointment. It was what? His anointment. So it was Samuel anointing him. That's why God says David is a man after what? My own heart. Are you hearing me? So David was not chosen the day he was anointed. Well, there was a time he was anointed. As much as there was a time he was chosen in the spirit. I don't know if I should continue. 
So to be chosen in, in a simpler term, or to give you a simple definition, write it down, means to be singled out for a certain purpose or mission. Because God does not choose people for them to go around and tell everyone that they are chosen. There must be an assignment. There must be a purpose. There must be a mission attached to who you are. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Hmm. To be chosen is a blessing. I wish I could talk about this. <laughs> you see, I've put my message together in my spirit as the Holy Spirit, you know, led me. But then again, now as I'm talking to you, it's as if a lot of things are just coming. And I feel in my spirit, that's what God wants you to hear. Amen. Are we continuing? Oh, yes. Are we continuing? Oh, yes. So as long as you are chosen, as long as you are set apart, as long as you are marked by God, you will be the enemy's target. When God favors you, the devil also favors you. I don't know if they are getting it. But in him favoring you, he does not favor you to prosper you. He favors you to stop you. That's why the enemy is never after anybody who's not going anywhere. Going anywhere has nothing to do with what you have produced as yet. Let me say that again. Going somewhere has nothing to do with the results that you have brought forth. God is, oh God. Hmm. Say go deep, Apostle. He does not measure greatness the way man measures greatness. Men will wait for results to clap for you. Men will wait for results to put you in the hall of fame. Are we together? They will put you in the hall of fame after you have proved yourself. That's men. Men don't care about one plus one. Men cares about two. The results. Are you, are you with me? But God is a God of one plus one. Man is a man of two. Does that make sense? That's why the Bible says in Luke 1, 8, uh, 0, 1, Luke 1, 8, it says, And the child John waxed strong in spirit. And he was very great until the day of his showing unto Israel. How is he great if he has not even baptized an end? How is he great, great if he has not baptized even a single person? So greatness to God is not measured by what you are producing. It's measured by what he has put in you. Does that make sense to you guys? Exactly. Exactly. So I want you guys to hear what I'm saying. So when God now favors you, he favors you because of what he has put in you. But the moment you become God's favorite, also the enemy comes after you. He is not moved by what you are producing. He is moved by the fact that God favors you. And he knows that God does not favor people who don't have anything. Because God protects his investment. I don't know if you guys are getting what I'm trying to say. That's why some of you are chosen and you have been saying this song and singing it. How come I am facing challenges after challenges? It's because when God favors you, hell will be after you. Some of you are wondering, but how come I'm hated like this? People are fighting me at work. I have a boss that is earning five times than what I'm earning. But this boss hates on me. I've got people who don't like me yet they are better than me. It's because you yourself are measuring your greatness based on what you have produced so far. But because they are able to see who you are before you manifest, that's what is irritating them. 
Saul did not wait for David to take a seat as a king for him to be after David. I don't know if you guys are getting what I'm saying. He didn't start da fighting David because David was a king already. He fought David before David became a king. And David had to run. And David had to uh, survive. And David did not die. Because chosen people are unkillable. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Ah, hate them. Hate them the way you want to. But you can't fight a chosen person and win. Anytime you fight a chosen person, you are bound to fail. Because what fights for them is time and their assignment. Time will say it's not yet their time. To die. Assignment will say they have not yet fulfilled that which they are born for. Amen. So they cannot die. Amen. And once time is on their side, the stars are on their side. Moon is on their side. Sun is on their side. All elements of creation are on their side. Amen. So you are fighting a battle you cannot win. Oh, you are not hearing me. Ah, You can't bury chosen people. They are seeds. They germinate. You will bury them only to see them multiply. They don't die, they multiply. I wish I was talking to chosen people. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why some of you, your lives have, have been a testimony, so to say, a miracle, something to talk about. Some of you from the day you were born, the enemy was after you. Do you think Jesus had to perform a miracle for Herod to release a statement that all children under the age of two must die? No. It's because he was threatened by that which he saw. And his magicians felt that there is something that has just happened in Bethlehem. And we need to kill it before it becomes. So that's why the enemy is after you. Yet you are like, but I've not yet produced anything. So he's fighting you from becoming. Because once you become, it will be too late for him to fight you. Amen. But because Jesus was chosen, heaven intervened. Moses was chosen. When he was born, babies were being killed. But Moses did not die. Why? Because Moses was chosen. Pharaoh himself could not kill Moses because Moses was chosen. Joseph's brothers could not kill Joseph because Joseph was chosen. Saul could not kill David because David was chosen. When you are chosen by God, even your enemies will think they are bearing you, yet they are promoting you. When the brothers of Joseph sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, Remember, first he told them the dream. Then they started hating on him. Before he told them the dream, they never hated him. There was nothing to hate. So meaning, a chosen person cannot be hated for no reason. You are thinking, they are hating me for no reason. Come on, wake up. They have a reason. It's just that you think everyone is spiritually blind like you. They sensed who you are. They picked who you are. You, you, your, your presence, your atmosphere. Are you hearing? Me? Rubs them in a different way. So the brothers had to are we on manual that side? Manual. Yeah. Okay, so the brothers had to hate on him because of what he had said to them. They said, do you think we are going to bow? And he was just telling them the dream. He said, he didn't say you are all going to bow to me. And then the Bible then says, I'm about to reveal Isaiah. Pay attention. Say reveal Isaiah, apostle. Then the Bible then says, they then said to themselves, let's murder this guy. Ah, the older brother said, wait a minute, we can't. He's our brother. We can't kill him. 
<laughs> ay, 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 ay. But we can sell him as a slave. Then the Bible then says they sold him to the Ishmaelites. They thought they were actually crushing the man so that he does not become. Little did they know they were helping him to become. They would think they are firing you. Oh my God. They are retrenching you. They are suspending you. Yet in the spirit they are part and parcel of the plan. Whose plan? God's plan. That's why we say man's rejection is God's direction. You always have to be prophetic. See what your naked eyes cannot see. So when they sold him, say Revelezai Apostle. When they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, they did not know that yes, they were Joseph's brothers, but they did not sell Joseph to what? To foreign people. Or to strange people. But they sold Joseph to his own brothers. It was from one brother to another brother. One will be like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Let's go back to the Bible. The father of Joseph is Jacob. Who was later on called Israel. Now the father of Jacob is Isaac. The father of Isaac is Abraham. But Abraham did not have one child. Abraham had two children. One with Hagar and one with Sarah. With Sarah, he had Isaac. With Hagar, he had Ishmael. Now, when Isaac was born, he begot Jacob. Jacob begot Joseph. But remember, Joseph is Jacob's son. Jacob is Isaac's son. Isaac is Abraham's son. But Abraham did not have one son. Abraham had a son called Ishmael. Meaning Isaac and Ishmael were brothers. And Isaac, he himself might not have known Ishmael. But his birth Ishmael, God was part of it. That's why when Abraham released Hagar, he took food, he took everything and gave the mother. As she left, they ran out of food and water, remember? Amen. And the Bible then says, and the baby cried. And the angel stood in front of the mother and said, God had the voice of your seed. You see that? So the Ishmaelites were not an outcast. Amen. Even when they were in the wilderness, God provided water, a well. Amen. Miracle water for them. Are you hearing me? Why will God preserve and protect Ishmael if Ishmael was a case? He was never a case. God already had went ahead and saw the plan that he told Abraham about in Genesis 15. When he said, your children will be slaves in Egypt in a foreign land for 400 years. And God knows it's going to happen through the son of Jacob because Jacob is the one who is Israel. And he knows it's going to be Joseph. But now God himself at the same time, he knows that Ishmael is going to play a part in this prophecy coming to pass. So he protects Ishmael. So Ishmael had children and these children had children and all the children of Ishmael are called the Ishmaelites. But who are the Ishmaelites? The Ishmaelites are brothers to who? To Isaac. Isaac is the father of Jacob. Jacob is Israel. So the Ishmaelites are brothers to what? Israelites. So when they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites, they thought they were selling Joseph to strangers. Yet they were selling Joseph to his own brothers. Ah, that's why we say it was a prophetic problem for a prophetic manifestations. Not every problem you face is there to bury you. Some of you is a prophetic problem for a prophetic manifestation. So when they had concluded that he's finished, not knowing that because he was chosen as a slave, first time slave in, in, in Egypt, 
he went straight to the palace. Listen, even, in, even when odds are against you, you will still find favor because you are chosen. Amen. He was not busy with the pigs. He was busy in the house of a leader. Yeah. That the Bible says everything he touched prospered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's chosen. He's chosen. When you are chosen by God, the enemy will try to silence you. It does not help when you sit back and mama. It does not help when you sit back and cry. Are you hearing me? Because the problem with chosen people is that they think because they are chosen, they should understand the process. Let me help you understand how God works with the chosen. Mabuza, when God deals with a chosen person, what he does, that just as he did to Joseph, he showed him the end, but never showed him the process. Joseph knew the stars are going to bow. And they're 11, and I've brought, I have 11 brothers. Are you hearing me? Yes. But he never saw himself being thrown in the pit. He never saw himself being accused of rape. He never saw himself in prison for years for something he did not do. He saw the end. That's what God does. When he appears to the chosen person, he will show you the end. Some of you, by the reason of your intuition, you will know this is who I am. You are not picking up those things from nowhere. God has revealed them to your spirit. And your mind is retrieving them. That's why some of you, where you are, you are like, I'm not supposed to be here. It is not pride. It is not entitlement. It is because your mind retrieved something from your spirit. So what is now causing you to feel what is going on is the process. <laughs> because according to you, I know where I'm supposed to be. But because you can only see where you are supposed to be, your spirit wants to be there. But does not want the process. So God will now take you, show you there, but not show you. It's like when he came to uh, uh, Moses. He said, I want you to deliver my people. I've come down to deliver them. I'm taking them to a promised land. A land full of milk and honey. God never said anything about wars. God never said anything about the wilderness. God never said anything about some of them dying. God never said anything about hunger. So when they left Egypt, they knew we are going to a place where we'll stay in houses we did not build. Ah, you are not hearing what I'm saying. They know we are going to experience a life of more than enough. From a life of not enough. But to get there, there is a process. And they ended up getting there. Why? Because they were chosen. They, they were chosen. Say with me, I'm chosen. chosen. Some of you, you divorced. And it, is, it was during that divorce uh, season of divorce that you were scratching your head. I'm a child of God. How can this happen to me? And yet to some of you, it was a prophetic problem for a prophetic manifestation. Because as long as you are chosen, anybody who's going to be a distraction to your destiny, heaven will remove them. <laughs> ah, you didn't hear me. Ah, you didn't hear me. Some of you, you think people betrayed you. They did not betray you. God revealed them to you. Some of them were not evil. They were set up by God. Ah, okay, 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 okay. They never had evil intentions. But for your assignment to manifest, they were set up. They betrayed you. You stopped this and you went that way only to manifest. Judas was not a bad guy. He was a good guy. When Jesus went to choose him in a place called Iscariot, because a lot of people think Judas Iscariot is his son name. No, his name is Judas. He never son him. Iscariot was a place where he was coming from. And those guys understood money. It was a place of money changers. 
just like Mary Magdalene. Her son name was not Magdalene. She was a play, from a place called Magdala. But because there was Mary, the mother of Jesus, they had to separate the two. And they said, Mary from Magdala, Mary Magdalene. So Judas, there was Jude, the brother of Jesus, biological brother of Jesus. So we would not have two Judes, or two, you, it was going to confuse us. But now Judas Iscariot. So Jesus went and chose this guy. He didn't bring himself to Jesus. <laughs> and he was a treasurer. But guess what the Bible then says? One of you, Satan has entered him. So it was not Judas. Satan entered Judas. It had to happen. Initially, it was supposed to be Peter. But Jesus prayed for Peter. Refused. How do I know? Because after Jesus told Peter, you are Peter. Upon the rock I'll build my church. I've given you keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind shall be also bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall also be loosed in heaven. Guess what then happens? The Bible says, and Jesus came to Peter and said, Satan asked for you, but I prayed for you. You, you see what I mean? And the reason why Jesus prayed for Peter is because Peter was chosen. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. So Judas himself ended up doing what he himself never thought. That's why the Bible says, and when he came back to his senses, he went back to say, take back your money. It was not him. He gave them their money. They threw it down. They laughed. And he took a rope and he hanged himself. Why will he kill himself if he was proud? Satan entered him. He was set up. You are not hearing. No, you are not hearing. You are not hearing me. So sometimes people will act in a certain way not because they are bad people. Is because when you now, your time to manifest has come. You will see people who you never thought they can be like this to be like that. And you go, but I, this person loved me. This, not this one. You are shocked yourself. Instead of sitting in the corner, saying, why do people always betray me? See an opportunity. See a ladder to your next level. You must then look, where is God taking me from here? Yes. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Because not every Judas is there to silence your destiny. Amen. Some Judas are there for your promotion. Amen. Because without Judas, there is no cross. Without cross, there is no salvation. Thank God for Judas. <laughs> oh, <yes>. uh, <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody saying, this is very deep, Apostle. I also have somebody here. Oh, li oh, listen to Anna. I've been a Christian for 37 years. But it was after I started listening to you that my Christian life started making sense. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is powerful. Thank God for Judas. <laughs> Vivian says, thank God for Jesus, for Judas. <laughs> and I'm telling you now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you, you'll be fighting. I'm silencing Judas in my life. No, you are, you are actually delaying your process. The longer it took Judas to be Judas, the longer it took for salvation to be introduced in the realm of men. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. One more time, say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Say, I'm chosen not to fail. But I'm, to but I'm chosen to advance. Some of you, you are chosen. In your families, you are chosen. Listen, you might be experiencing rejection because, I mean, that's part of the process. Sometimes it makes me laugh when I hear somebody who's chosen saying, why am I rejected like this? I mean, 
It's a price every chosen person must pay. Why will you be special and not conquer things that after conquering them, you will have a reason to be special? To whom much is given? Much is expected. Let me answer another question. Say, answer it, Apostle. A lot of people say things like, KB, please record this for me. A lot of people say things like, how come when I pray for people, people will receive their answers? How come when I pray for myself, I don't see answers? How come I'm always there for people, but nobody's there for me? Now, let me answer you. The answer is simple. You are chosen. What does that mean? Say, break it down, Apostle. When God chooses you, he did not choose you for you. You are chosen not to go around with your chest up saying, I'm chosen. You are not chosen for you. Let me put it in a way that the 21st century church will understand. You are not anointed for you. You are not anointed for yourself. That's why Paul says, I thank God for the grace that he has given me for you. He then says, ye are partakers of my grace. Are you hearing me? They were beneficiaries of his grace. Now listen to this. When God anoints you, it's not for you. If it was for you, you are going to forget what you are anointed for and you are going to focus on you. Let me put it in a way that it will sound better. In the Bible, there is a man called Elisha, a great prophet, we know him, who died, and the Bible says he died because of fever. Another vision says he had a chronic disease. Wait a minute. Is this not Elisha who healed Naaman from Lepros? Is this not Elisha who in Israel, people with Lepros, God healed because of his presence? Is this not Elisha who healed the bitter water and the barren land? Is this not Elisha who raised the dead? This is Elisha. How is he dying? Because of sickness. Now watch this. Even after he died, the Bible then says, and a dead body of a young boy was thrown where his bones were. When the dead body hit the bones of Elisha, the Bible says, and the young boy came back to life. He's dead. His bones can raise the dead. But how did this fellow die? Chronic disease. If his bones could raise the dead, how did he die? He did not die because of old age. He died because of a sickness. The anointing that was on him was not for him. Amen. It was for others. Amen. So, Apostle, are you saying that the anointing could not heal him? It was not his. Let me put it in a way that you'll understand. It was for others. If Elijah was still alive, he would have prayed for Elisha, and Elisha would have been healed. Mm. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. And that is because Elisha is not anointed for himself. And Elijah is not anointed for himself, but Elijah is anointed for others. Amen. That's why Elisha, as great as he was, he was able to fight anything that fought the, 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 the work of God. But when Jezebel said, come here, he ran. You're not hearing me. No, no, no. You, you are clearly not hearing me. Didn't Jesus, in Matthew 10, verse 1, give his disciple power to heal all manner of diseases, to cast out unclean spirits? And Peter later on came and said, Master, demons, they listen to us. They had so much power. Watch this now. They had so much power that they refused in Matthew 15 to heal the daughter of the Canaanite woman. 
they refused. They said, we can't do it. You are a Canaanite. We are here for the Israelites. Watch this now. The same Peter, the mother was sick. Peter did not heal the mother. Peter went to Jesus and said, Master, <laughs> come. <laughs> ay, 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 you're not hearing me. No, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. No, no, you're not hearing me. A lot of people think Jesus resurrected himself. No. The Bible says, I'm talking the Bible. Please don't, don't, don't be ahead. I'm t I always talk the Bible. The Bible says, all I want to know, that was Paul, is Christ. And the power that resurrected him. And then when you read the, another vision, it will say the same Holy Ghost. That the resurrected Christ. If he lives in you, ayah, he shall vitalize. He shall vagorize your mortal bodies. Amen. Are you hearing this? Yes. So the Holy Spirit pulled him up. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not hearing me. Ah, yeah, you're not hearing me. I wish I had chosen people here. Do I have chosen people today? Do I have chosen people here today? Amen. Let me see fire emojis. We are going deeper. The devil is in trouble. Some of you, you are going to manifest after this. Some of you, you are going to manifest. Some of you, your dreams are going to be clear. Some of you, you begin to move in your calling. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are here. We are here. I want to see fire emojis. I want to see fire emojis. If you are with me, I want to see fire emojis. Chosen people are very dangerous people. To fight them is to fight God. <laughs> to be chosen. The problem starts when you don't know who you are. Because the enemy will use that to attack you. Oh, uh, what is this again? Um, YouTube. Ah, YouTube is on fire. Ah. A lot of people wonder, why do we always, fire is the nature of God. Hallelujah. And there are certain things that I always say and I will say, they only respond to force. Fire consumes. Fire devours. If you have the mindset of fire, the enemy will play far from you. Fire eats. Fire bends. You can't befriend fire. You can't box fire and say, let me transport fire from here to there. It will consume that box and you yourself. That's why Hebrews 12, 29 says, our God is a consuming fire. Unstoppable. Fire penetrates. Hallelujah. That's why when there are few things you don't understand in your life, you just call fire. Fire is the nature of God. If anybody tells you, don't go to these fire, fire churches, why do you have a problem with that? Because God is a consuming fire. I, seriously. Say, me, I don't go to a church where they talk about fire. Ah, uh -uh. No wonder why demons have turned you to a playground. And the person saying that they have spiritual husbands, familiar spirits, everything. Me, I don't go to marine spirits are taking that person. All sorts of spirits. I've never preached about Jezebel spirit because I'm trying to locate where is it exactly. What does it mean, you know, if somebody has a Jezebel spirit? I've never preached on it because I'm trying to find a revelation that myself I will preach that is really biblical. I'm not saying if somebody said yes, the spirit is not biblical. No. Something can be fundamental, but it has to be biblical. Amen. Are we together? Yes. And something can be spiritual, but not scriptural. Yes. I don't know if you got it. Exactly. And it's dangerous to teach babies about something that is spiritual and not scriptural. I see a lot of people here saying, I am chosen. So we, we flow, right? We flow. 
You need to then understand by revelation that you are not anointed for yourself. You are anointed for others. You are not chosen for yourself. So the reason why the enemy is fighting you, he doesn't really care much about you. He cares about those who are going to benefit. He cares about those who are going to be helped. He cares about those. When I say he cares, I mean that that's his main concern. That if you make it, if you become, your generation will walk in the light of God forever. He knows that your family will break a curse that made everybody that came before them irrelevant. Because one thing the enemy wants to see in a believer's life is a believer becoming irrelevant. Ah. He doesn't care about anything as long as you are not relevant. That's why curses or generational curses, their main purpose is to make men irrelevant. <laughs> when a blessing comes, a blessing comes to make you relevant. That is what the, the whole thing is all about. Your generation will talk about you and some will use your name as leverage and say, thank God for Hannah. Thank God for Kennedy. Thank God for Loveness. Thank God for Sharon. Thank God for my grandmother. Hoo -hoo. Thank God for my grandfather, my father. Hoo -hoo. Because God is a generational God. And we are within our rights every time when we think and we plan, we plan generational. Hence the Bible then says a wise man leaves inheritance for his children's children. Not his children, but his children's children because God is a generational God. That's why when he said in the book of Hosea 4 verse 7, he says, you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you as my priest and I will reject your children and your children's children. So your children are rejected not because they were meant to be rejected but because of what you started. That's why being chosen is something that you must take serious because if you do not, it might take God five generations to raise somebody like you. And some of you, you don't understand that the reason why the battles are like this is because you are carrying a weight of 10 generations. Ah, you are not hearing me. Ah, you are not hearing me. God is a generational God. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Say, I hear you, Apostle. I hear you, Apostle. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. What the enemy wants you to believe is that you are out of time. What the enemy wants you to believe is that nothing will become of you. I'm telling you now, you will cause you to ask yourself, will anything good come out of me now at this age? Just as Nathaniel asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Are you hearing me? You might not be saying that direct, but your unbelief and you doubting what God is showing you about you. That's what you are saying. You need not to believe you are going to be poor. You need not to see yourself poor. I once met this other guy. <laughs> he came and he saw me in the office. You know I deal with a lot of people. And I love it because that's what God has called me for. God has called me to serve his people. So, he comes in the office, he says, Apostle, I don't know why I'm poor. Because I can't see myself poor, but I'm poor. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing not because it made me happy. He sees a reality that is opposite of his reality. Amen. And as a result, he has a question. And he's questioning the right person, a man of God, a prophet. Amen. Meaning, is there something that I should know? Are you hearing me? Amen. And he said, no matter how hard I try, I can't see myself poor. I can't. I, I can't. You see now? That is a man on a mission. But now, the reality that he's in is fighting the 
reality he's not yet in. That's why God is a God of promise. But the Bible says he's faithful, he who promised. What that means is God will show you a reality that has not taken place. And your reality might be contrary to what God is showing you. But you need to believe God. That's why whenever we talk about a promise, we are talking about a reality that has not what? Taken place. If I come to you now, I'll give an example using Mama Charisma. When I met my wife, I put an engagement ring. It was not marriage ring. It was a promise ring. So that promise ring says, I will marry you. So she went around. When people saw her, men with money say, hello, sister. She just lifted her hand. I'm sorry, I'm taken. Everybody she met, she lifted her hand. I'm out of the market. I'm taken. She told everybody she's taken. But the truth of the matter is, she was not taken. She was promised. So it was that promise that made her live in a reality that has not taken place. So that's how God wants you to live. He wants to see yourself, to see yourself. He wants you to see yourself prosperous. Amen. Walking in his light. In divine health. And that should be your confession. That's why we are, we are to hold fast to it. You have a destiny to fulfill. You have, say, I have a destiny to fulfill. The enemy will make you feel like you are out of time. He will make you feel you have been moving in cycles for a long time and you don't have any. Imagine them being chosen, yet they were in Egypt, toiling and working as slaves. If somebody came 50 years after them, after being there and said, you are chosen, they'll say, ah, you stop joking with us. And I'm here to tell you, you will not die until you see the manifestations of God's promises in your life. What you need to do is to always make sure that you guard the presence of God with everything that is in you in your life. Nobody should come and move you out of God's plan and out of God's mercy and out of God's purpose in your life. The presence of God should be the number one thing in your life to protect. Because as long as you are chosen and as long as you are with God, you will arrive. I don't know if they... Uh, there is only one person, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but uh, Ambrosia. Ambro, Ambrosia is receiving. Are you hearing me? So you need to close your ears from hearing your situation talk to you. Because situations, they talk. And open your eyes to see what God has provided. Imagine the disciples will have died with Jesus on a cushion. But it was after they opened their eyes and said, Master, we are dying. And Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. They were using natural means to deal with something that needed supernatural intervention. That's why I'm saying to you, the presence of God is the most important thing in your life. Because as the chosen one, you will need supernatural intervention. Because your life is supernatural. And what fights you will be fighting you from the spirit viewpoint. So even when you go through isolation as the chosen person, don't stone yourself. So why am I isolated? What do you think? We were all isolated. Everybody gets isolated as long as you're chosen. So what makes you different? Stop murmuring now. Stop whining now. You are delaying the process. But why am I isolated? The answer is simple. You are isolated for preparation. The season of isolation, we call it the season of preparation. The problem is you want to manifest without preparation. And God is not like that. And it is in the season of isolation that God will bring revelation for your elevation. So your revelation is who, this is who you are. And when you come out, this is what I want you to do. 
That's why a lot of people will find themselves after isolation. And every chosen person will enter that season. Where you feel like, you know what? People don't hear. It's like people don't understand. That's why in our mentorship class, which is closed, is full now. I love it because um, even now I'm meeting them one by one, right? So every time I'm in that class, every time I'm meeting them, it's crazy because I'm meeting a group of people who have now understood who they are and some already are seeing, 90% re- are seeing results, are manifesting. But if you, you were to hear them testify, they would tell you that I've been in this work for a long time and nobody had answers. I thought I was crazy. People thought something was wrong with me. But it was after when they joined the mentor point, the mentorship class, then they realized that it's not them only like that. There are other people that are like that. And when they met there, it was more like gifted people with supernatural abilities coming together. Are you hearing me? Then they understand that, oh, yes, something like this was happening, but in this way in my life. But we are all under one umbrella, chosen. Are you hearing me? Oh, there is crazy, man. There you need to be really supernatural. Oh. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. First time, I remember, I will say this and I won't mention a name because she's here as well, my mentee. When she was speaking to me on one-on-one um, a few months ago, she was like, trees speak to me. I said, eh? She said, trees speak to me. And one time, a wall spoke to me. I said, wait a minute. A tree like roots tree, yes. A wall like building bricks, yes. She asked me questions. I said, wait, I've never had a tree speak to me. I never had a wall speak to me. So, before I tell you anything about this, give me time. Because I thought to myself, no, man, this person, this is beyond now. I've heard it all, but this one now, this is beyond. Right? Amen. Hey, hey, what is this now? So we, we finished, so I was praying. Then I spoke to my man of God. I said, listen, there is this, my mentor, there is this woman in my program. Listen, is these things really there like a tree? He started laughing. He didn't answer me. Ah, I know him. He's mysterious anyway. So I said, okay. I slept. The same night, in a dream. It's like I'm walking. I'm in the grass. And all of a sudden, when I looked down, the green of the grass, you could tell this thing is alive. The, not, not the grass, so to say. Only the color. You could tell this, this color is alive. And as I looked down, a voice came from the ground. It was as if the grass was talking to me. When I came out of that vision, I started binding. As I was binding, the Holy Spirit said, how are you binding me? Wait. You see, somebody will believe that God spoke through a donkey. That's easy for them to believe because it's in the Bible. They will believe That God himself, his voice is like a thunder, according to the book of Job. No, that's the New Testament now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible then says, it was like a trumpet. I don't know if the guys are getting what I'm saying here. So I woke up and after in the morning, I spoke to my mentor. Then it was then when now, the mentor of my mentor, one time he seated and corridors came and spoke to him. Then when now, you see, I'm hearing the generals. Ah, that's nothing. These things are alive. They have life trapped in them. Even the non-living can hear. Then I remembered, I said, hey, that's why Ezekiel was able to speak to the dry bones. Because there were no ears at that time. So, he was not speaking to the ear. He was speaking to the ear of the ear. 
When he spoke to the dry bones, ears were the last thing to come. But the dry bones were hearing him. Ah, they didn't get it. I said, but how did Jesus speak to the sea and rebuked the storm? How did he do it? These things they can hear. Then I went to the book of Job. When I was reading the book of Job, I then understood, ah, they can hear. I said, nature can hear and nature can speak. Oh, you're not hearing me. Ah, you're not hearing me. Then I had to put it into test now. I went back and I saw this person. I said, well, we did scriptures, mainly the book of Job and Ezekiel. We went deeper, right, of course, you know. And then after that, why is this now? After that, I was like to her, how often does this happen? This is what shocked me, right? This is what? What shocked me. She says, um, even now, if I can be in prayer, it can happen at any time. I said, okay, let's pray. So we started praying together. We started praying, praying, praying. She's in USA, by the way. So we started praying, 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 praying. As we were praying, she then said, uh, the son spoke to her. I said, the son spoke to you. Son, you, you must be, you, you, you need help. Yes, last time it was a tree. And I thought, you know what? Let me go and dig deep. Now the son, I know a man who spoke to the son. Then I then realized, if the son could hear Joshua, the son can speak. I, I don't know if you guys are hearing me. Because the Bible in the book of Job, I know this is too deep for you guys to understand. The Bible, listen, all creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Like a woman in labor. All creation. Why would it wait? Why will it be there waiting for us if the creation has no role in the manifestation of the sons of God? I know this is too deep anyway. Are you hearing me? We don't pray to the stars. We don't worship the stars. Was Joshua worshiping the sun? No. There was an angel, as a matter of fact, in their midst fighting for them. He spoke to the sun. And the sun obeyed. The Bible speaks about the elements, the ordinances. That can be on your side. Amen. In the book of Revelation, when you get time, please read chapter 12. It will explain to you nicely what I'm talking about. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. The Bible then says, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, let me not go deeper. Ah, let me not go deeper. Ah, it will confuse a lot of babies. When Jesus was born, the wise men, the men, the, the magi, Follow the star. Why would they follow a star if the star was not leading someone? And the Bible never said anything about that. We are not astrologists. We are believers. Amen. We are above that. Amen. The authority that God has given us, just as God can speak to a tree and tree can say, yes, master, we have power. The problem starts when you turn them into God's. Because when they look at you, they see a God. Ah, one black, they see a God. What do you mean? The book of Psalms says, ye are gods. But because you know not, you die like mere men. So when we, then as time went by, then God himself trained me to train him. And she even hears the Holy Spirit. Very deep though. But all along, she also thought she was mad. Like something was not right with her. To be chosen is not easy. That's what I'm trying to say. It will take you to meet somebody who understands who you are. Because if you are with people who don't understand who you are, they will judge you. They will actually think there is something wrong with you, yet there is something right with you. And that is because religion has boxed them so they want to box you. They think you have lost your way with God. 
or is something is not right with you. We are spirit beings with earthly experience. We are not earthly beings with spiritual experience. We are spiritual people. I don't know if this makes sense. You are not crazy. Some of you, you dream within a dream within a dream. You are not crazy. Some of you, you see. You see even spirits that are fighting people on the, when you're in the mall. You know, I've spoken to my mentees and you realize that it's dangerous for you to be gifted, to be chosen and hang around people who are not like you. That's why I always advise chosen people must what? Hang around chosen people. That's why you will see that prophets will befriend prophets. Pastors will befriend pastors. Why? Iron sharpens an iron. It's not a stick that sharpens an iron. Hey, the way you are quiet. I was just talking about a reality Amen. of something, something that happened. The way you are so quiet, you are like this. Hallelujah. That's why we have, we, when is the school of the chosen coming? 25th. This Saturday. And we still have space, right? I believe almost everybody here has registered for the advanced school of the chosen. Very easy to register. We have made it so easy for everyone to access it. The team made sure. Are you hearing me? It's called Advanced School of the Chosen for a reason. We had the School of the Chosen, which was way high. And we had a lot of people. And I thought, this is it. But we had emails coming in, coming in, and I prayed, and the Spirit of God said, it's okay, you can do it. Are you hearing me? So we have the School of the Chosen. Just in case you are here and you're tuning in for the first time. We have a lot of people who are in there, a lot. So, you know, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to joke with you at this point in time. It's real. It's happening. So, it's called the, school, the Advanced School of the Chosen for a reason. There's going to be a reformation and transformation. So, if you have not registered, can you put that link there or something for the people to go? Is it on the screen already? Okay. There is a, a website. What is the website? Dr. Means School of Ministry.com. You go there, you register. If you have not registered, but I believe almost everybody registered. So watch this now. Why? Because it is in that platform that we go deeper and not just deeper, we then reveal you to you. Are you hearing me? Because in every season of your life, there will be a covenanted man. There will be a chosen man to come and reveal you to you. So, don't miss it. Do it for yourself. Let's move forward. As long as you are under the influence of my voice and you want to grow in who you are, School of the Chosen is for you. The other schools are full, so we can't, we can't, because I saw somebody saying, how do I join the mentorship? It's full, 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 full. Right? So everything is full. We just have this school now that they say it's still open so you can go for it. Now watch this. Very easy to access it. Accessible. This one, everyone can access it. And if you're a mother, you have children that you know that are chosen, I will advise you to even register for them. Give them the link once it's sent to you, wherever they are. Let them connect on that day. Because this is our last school for 2024. That will be open, right? Now, let me close by saying, do you know that there are altars that are only erected to fight the chosen one? I'm, I'm not joking with you. I'm not joking with you. When God spoke to Gideon, remember Gideon? He was hiding from the Midianites. Do you guys remember? And the angel said, thou mighty man of valor. You remember, right? In the book of Judges. You guys remember, right? Uh, yeah, is it? Yeah. 
jo- Joshua, sorry. Thou mighty man of what? I think we might as well as go there. Why would the angel call this guy the mighty man of valor? He himself is shocked. Me, mighty man of valor, since when? He's confused. Are you hearing me? He himself is shocked. Say, ah, 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 ah. How am I a mighty man of valor? Please read for me. Or oh, you can put it there, I can read. It's okay. Uh, Judges chapter 6. You know the story of Gideon is in Judges chapter 6. Verses, uh, let's look for the verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared. This guy was hiding actually. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you. Ah! You, O thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then all this, this, all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of? Are you hearing that? Now, he is told about who he is, but he does not know that type of a character that the angel is addressing. They say, you are a mighty man of valor. This man was hiding. <laughs> and the Lord said, you know what? You have been a mighty man of valor, but they are altars of your father's house. And the Lord instructed him, tear them down. <laughs> are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Ah, you are not hearing me. To be a chosen person, it's not a done deal. If you fail by the reason of diabolic powers. There are people who are chosen. But their father's curse can fight them that they will die without manifesting. Do you know Abraham had a family pattern? When God said, come out, it was because of his father, Terah. The Bible says he was a worshiper of the moon god. While he was in Chaldea, the father of Abraham, Terah, he was a worshiper of idols. And God said, Abraham is chosen. If I begin to work while he is there, there will be a, 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 a misunderstanding. Come out. Who? Your father. Do you see that now? Why would God connect it to his father if there was nothing wrong to the father? Then when you read the Bible in the book of Joshua, it then tells you what was wrong with the father and why God said he must come out of his father. It's in the book of Joshua now. The book of Joshua answers Genesis chapter 12. Are you with me? Look at Jacob. He was chosen. But he fought to be what he was. So I'm talking to somebody here. Saying I'm chosen, it's a done deal. Okay, it will happen. No, it's war. It's fight. It's war. Are you hearing me? You are to fight for who you are. Do you think Satan rolled the red carpet for those who were chosen and say, "Come and take what's yours"? No. Are you hearing me? Jesus Himself said, "Satan is after me, but he has nothing on." Satan is so mean that as long as you are chosen, he will raise people. Do you know even Jesus to be crucified, Satan played a part in it. That's why Paul says, if Satan knew the God of this world, if he knew the prince of this world, who the king of glory was, he would not have crucified him. Do you see that now? He played a role in it. He wanted to silence Jesus. Some of you don't understand what I'm saying. But thank God because Jesus' ministry was complete and accomplished. So what would have happened if Jesus' ministry was not yet completed? That's why it's war. That's why in your prayers you need... You see when we talk about raising an altar, building an altar, 
We're not talking about some real, uh, rich, ritualistic things and rituals where you have candles everywhere. No, forget about that. Stop being dramatic now. Amen. We are talking about a place that is dedicated, you know, like where you have dedicated this place to be your prayer, to be like a, a, a spiritual portal. This is where you meet God. Not that God is not with you, but this is a sacred place for you. This is where when you pray, you go, you stand, whatever you do. That's what we are talking about. That becomes your spiritual airport. Are you hearing me? No, they have things that are dramatic in your house. And God wonders, is this one okay? Ah, listen to somebody. Is it wrong to light a candle when you are praying? <laughs> no. Why would it be wrong? It's like, is it wrong to light a light while you are praying? Why would it be wrong? I don't see anything wrong with that. Oh, beside, if God tells you to do it, who am I to come and say it's wrong? Unless then God, you see, the problem is with us preachers, we, we use encounter as doctrine. Does that make sense? Or should I explain it? It makes sense, okay. It makes sense, okay. So if I have an encounter and I preach based on my encounter, I can easily mislead you. Because another man of God had an encounter that is different from mine. And if they are both preaching encounters, or if we are both preaching encounters, we will confuse you as our audience. Because you yourself now, you're saying, but this one says, but this one says, not but the Bible says. You see the difference now? Exactly. That's why I always tell God's people, the day I stop leading you to Christ is the day you should stop following me. Because my mission in your life now will have been now another thing that you don't know. You see, my assignment is very simple. I'm clear with God and God is clear with me as to what he has called me for. God has called me and he has chosen me for a very simple thing. To reveal you to you. Simple as that. And I know that is what God has called me for. That's why we always say by fire and by thunder. You shall be what God has called you to be. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody's asking, where do I register? Like, seriously, didn't we talk about that? We are gone. Somebody's asking now. Didn't you put it there? There is something on the screen. Go to that website and you register there. Praise the Lord. So we move forward now. Altars. How do you know there is an altar? Because, you see, sometimes a person can fight you. But sometimes an altar can fight you. How do you know you are being fought by an altar? How do you know that an altar is the one fighting you? When you start noticing negative occurrences, right? That every time you want to use logic, it doesn't come together. Oh, you missed me already. I don't know how to explain it. If you missed me already, I don't know. Well, when you want to use reasoning, it, it, it doesn't come together. Well, when you look at, I'll give an example, right? You are working. It's, this is an example. This is not, has nothing to do with one. It's just an example. You are working. And boom, you receive a bonus. A lot of money. Everything was fine all of a sudden. And every time you Money has to go, right? You are moving in a reverse order, even financially. I pray that will never be your portion again. Now you receive a huge amount of money. And you know now, finally, I'm going to start something and finish. And before you know it, somebody gets sick. And it needs you to take out money. Then you take out that money, right? And say, but it's just with this one. Then before you know it, your garage door is not working. You say, but this garage door, what will have happened to it? Then you fix the garage door. 
Then the next thing, your windows break. What is happening? Then when the money is finally gone, it seems as if everything now is fine. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys. So what you are dealing with has crossed the line of the natural. Your car is fine and all of a sudden it breaks. Some of you, your car does not, you know, I, I remember you people, please hear me. I'm not crazy, please. Don't downplay what I'm talking about. I remember we prayed for this other woman's car. Are you hearing? And the problem that was in the car ceased. It was not a physical problem. It, it is a spirit possessed the car. So that she can run dry financially. This is not a story. We prayed for this woman in 2015. I never thought it would be possible. Until when we were praying, the spirit of the Lord revealed to me to say, she does not have a problem. But there is a spirit. She bought the car from somebody. And that person did some funny things to the car. So she does not know that this car was dedicated to things. Are you hearing me? Uh, People don't know that spirits can survive even in deserts. I, I'm telling you. Spirits can survive even inside animals. Swines were able to host legion, troop. That's a lot. Small things. Hear me. Once you notice that an altar is fighting you, it's fighting your destiny. Because sometimes it can be an altar, not even from your father's house, can be an altar that was erected to fight your father. But now your father is gone. Now the altar is fighting. Without you doing anything. Because spiritual matters are like that. They are generational. So you need them to know altar for altar. That's why your prayer life, you must not joke with it. An attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny. To refuse to pray is to refuse to manifest. The enemy does not understand the language of diplomacy. That's why to show mercy to the enemy that is fighting you is to give up your destiny easily. That's why we say prayer is a necessity for survival. Men ought to pray always. That is because in the spirit, any time something can be orchestrated. So every time you pray, you are ahead of the enemy. And you can't manifest in the physical that which is spiritual without prayer. Prayer becomes a vehicle that transports what is in you. From the spirit world to the physical world. That's why our Lord Jesus was a man of prayer. All these great prophets were men of prayer. Why? Because it is not enough to be gifted. It is not enough to be chosen. There's so much I can talk to you about. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. That your light will shine upon them. That if, Heavenly Father, your hand of mercy and your hand of grace will mightily rest upon them that everything they touch, whatever they touch, shall prosper. Yes. I stand against all plans of the enemy that were functioned against them. Yes. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that they have entered a season of spiritual upliftment, yes. a season of financial elevation, a season of favor with men and favor with God. A season of manifestation. A season of revelations. A season of encounters. I stand against all diabolic altars that were erected to speak against their destinies. I dismantle them. I declare that they are rendered powerless right now. Void right now. And they will never be able to reach and get hold of your people. In the name of Jesus, 
I declare that you are protected from the wickedness of men. I declare that you are protected from the plans of the enemy. And all the plans of the enemy function against your life, they have been turned upside down. You shall finish this year strong. And any appointment with death has been cancelled. You shall not die before your time. You shall manifest that which God has put in you. You are not a failure, but you are a success. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak to your destiny. That That increase is yours. Promotion is yours. Good health is yours. Favor is yours. In the name that is above every name. May the light of God shine in your life. In your going in, I declare you are protected. In your going out, I declare you are protected. God himself, the Holy Spirit, will stand tall through you. Where you go, God will go. Where you are, they will see the manifestation and the hand of God. I condemn all words that had been spoken against your life. I condemn them right now. If there be a word that is the reason why you are experiencing delay, I condemn that word. If there be a word that has taken shape and is negatively affecting your life, I condemn those words. I speak to your destiny. Let there be light. I speak to your finances. Let there be light. Your walk with God, let there be light. Your spiritual life, let there be light. Your dream life, let there be light. Above all, let there be understanding. You are chosen. In Jesus' name. That is so. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is where you receive. That prayer, you have to receive it like your life depends on it. Hallelujah. I want us to quickly honor God with our substance. And before we give, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want you to give by faith. Hebrews 11 verse 4. It says, by faith, Abel. I want you to give by what? Give by faith. Don't just give because you are used to it. Give by what? By faith. And let it come from the heart of love. Hallelujah. Let it come from the what? The heart of love. Don't give because you're compelled. Don't give because you feel forced. If you feel forced, don't do it. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this giving tonight will be like the giving of a man called Cornelius in the Acts 10. That there will be an angelic activity by the reason of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There will be divine intervention so. by the reason of it. So. Hallelujah. So. We can give. Let's do it out of faith. Amen. I know there are people here who are can't wait to give because they're used to it. Let's do it out of it. And our cash app today is at uh, New Life World. Praise the Lord, everybody. New Life World today. So that's the cash app we're using today. Hallelujah. And God bless everybody that is giving. And, um, you know, just so that you know, Every time you attach a prayer request to your giving, we see it and we pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.
giving time. Blessing time. Blessing time. And if you see people, people are going to give. If you see people leaving, they are not disappearing. They are going to give. Never be, especially on a service like this. I encourage you to go and give. Hallelujah. How much should I give? Ah, I've never told anybody. I don't know why uh, this person here is asking how much. It's not about that. It's about your heart. We are not in a business of telling people this is how, how far you need to show God your faith, your love, whatever. Are you, are you with me? Amen. What moves you is what you should give. If it's one dollar moving you, give one dollar. If it's $200 moving, it's $2,000 moving you, give $2,000. Where you feel, you know what, this year has settled what I was feeling in my spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Malia Baroshka. So we also have our, um, our PayPal for those that are giving for the first time. Listen, we have men and women right here, a lot of people that are just honoring God and giving to God. And go ahead and just honor God. Give God what you can, the best you can. And we have prayer requests here. I want us to pray, Tim, here and lift everybody in prayer. Because <clears throat> there are people that are giving out of sacrifice. There are people who are giving <clears throat> because to them it's a matter of now or never. There are people who are giving not because they have. They are giving but in a way of God remember me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't give to bribe God. We give to demonstrate our faith. Giving is a photocopy of our faith. Let's pray. Please pray for everybody. That is giving. Just lift up your voice and begin to pray. Because I can see that other people are touching their prayer requests. You see, somebody saying, my son is chosen, but the enemy has been controlling him ever since he was, ever since he was 18. So, Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Let's pray. I believe there is supernatural intervention. And let me advise everybody. Never be available when it comes to prayer. Available when it comes to this. And not be available when it's time to give. Amen. Giving is one thing. You, it doesn't go unnoticed. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So, I'm not teaching you how to give. You already know that already. I'm just talking to somebody who's coming for the first time. So I'm just helping them. Glory be to God. Be a radical giver. Back in the days we used to say, be a violent giver. Be a radical giver. 
Hallelujah. Go ahead and honor God with your substance. Go ahead and we are left with two minutes. And as we are giving, something just hit my spirit. Condition does not obey. But it is obedience that conditions. Amen. What that means is your situation does not obey anything. But your obedience will condition your situation. Know what to do when you are in a season of a breakthrough. Amen. So people are still giving, but I'm, I feel like sharing this. I said this one time, but this I've never said it to you, but listen to this. <clears throat> the reason why people don't experience breakthrough, sometimes it's lack of revelation. Jesus is invited, reverend, by Simon the leper. By who? Simon the leper. For dinner. Now, Jesus is eating. Simon has leprosy. Then the Bible then says, there came a woman. She broke a perfume. We know the story. Wiped Jesus' feet. We know what Judah said about the whole scenario, the whole uh, moment. And Jesus stood up and said, this woman did something that is very special. And by the reason of what she did, wherever the gospel will be preached, her name will be mentioned. Why is this now? Jesus was not there for that woman. Jesus was there for Simon. That when you read the Bible, you don't see anywhere Simon being healed. Yet he had invited Jesus. Are you not hearing me? He is with the healer. But because of a lack of revelation, to him, Jesus is another influential man. He's another celebrity. Are you hearing me? I don't know if you guys are getting it. This woman comes with a revelation. And the people and the disciples in their minds were saying, if he knew who she was, he would not have allowed him. Then Jesus stood up and answered them. And the reason why they were murmuring is because she was somebody else. We all know the story here of who Mary Magdalene was. What the type of a job she did before she became a disciple. Are you hearing me? Amen. And it was not allowed in the Jewish culture for a woman to come around the camp of men. So she entered that on its own was breaking the law. When you have a revelation, nothing will stop you. It says it was for a year's wages, worth a year's wages. She broke it in the feet of Jesus. And that rearranged her life. Are you hearing? Amen. There are things in life when you do them, and I feel in my spirit, this is the right moment. We do them by revelation. Amen. Hallelujah. We do them by one? We do them by revelation. And I know for a fact that your life in God will never be the same again. And I pray for you wherever you are. And every time we stop this, we have people complaining that we stop giving before they give and all of that. And I always say to you, you can always give. It doesn't have to be when we are seeing it, even after service, you can. That's why even those who watch a rebroadcast, you are watching the service now. Give now. Amen. You see? So you always give at the time you are watching the service or the time you are ready to give. But your giving should be, I'm giving for that specific service. Say with me one more time, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. So I'll be seeing you Saturday. Saturday, 7 p.m. Central African time. We are having our advanced school of the chosen. It's online, so you have no excuse not to be there. It's online. 
is online. You can't afford to miss it. So those that are still registering, go to drmizschoolofministry.com. Register today because the school is on Saturday. I'll be having two boards, one on my left, one on my right. If I don't have two boards, I'll have one board, but I'll be writing. And everybody knows what it means when apostle in the class will be writing. It will be fire for fire. Amen. Hallelujah. So this class mainly is to prepare as well the chosen for the year 2024. Amen. Yeah. And gifted people. Are you guys excited and ready? God bless you. I'm excited to announce that we have our crossover coming, global crossover service. It's happening in South Africa. Run back on the 31st of December, 2023. So, so wherever you are in the world, you are invited. We have people coming from USA, Australia, India, Zimbabwe, Botswana. Even around South Africa, we have people coming from Cape Town. You can be in South Africa somewhere in Gauteng, and you feel it's, it's, it's impossible for you not to show up, or it's difficult. No. Doors open at 2 p.m. That's because of a lot of people coming. The service starts at 6 p.m. So you are to be there. So start now preparing and pulling your strings now. Pull your strings now. Are we together? Because global crossover 2023 will be a heavy heater. Who you cross over with matters. Because a lot of things have been there. I'm excited about it. So I will see you on the 31st as well. Those that are far, you are invited. Amen. So if you need help with invitation letter, airport, accommodation, in sense where can I sleep and all of that, and you are far, text our communication team. They are there to help you. Amen. Hallelujah. So I will be seeing you on Saturday. And I'll be seeing you as well on Sunday. We have a service called My Story Must Change. Yeah. Say with me, my story must change. My story must change. So I'll see you on Sunday, 10 o'clock a.m. Central African time. And God bless. Everybody. God bless everybody. God bless everybody. Thank you for loving God and thank you for loving us.